Yes, here we there are. We are. <laughs> there we are. All right, all right. Just gonna, How's her internet gonna doing? Gonna get started. It started. Greetings. Welcome to Papa Pank. I am Jalen Clark Owens, and this is my co-host, Justin Jane. Yes, it is. And we welcome you to another edition of Pop Pank Live. You're listening to the tunes of Ill Dukes with their song, Terrabon, from the An Octoroon soundtrack. An Octoroon is a play by Brandon Jacob Jenkins. And that is where Justin and I met. We met doing that play back in 2016. And our shenanigans have landed us here on Pop Pank, ready to talk with four different local Philly companies who are empowering and lifting up the work of people of color. So sit back, get your pop a drink, and get ready to enjoy the shenanigans. Yes. Oh my gosh. Okay. I am so excited for tonight's episode. And for a second there, I thought we lost you. You've been, you were glitching out that entire time. Oh no. It's not versus. It's not as bad as versus, but it was glitchy. If anybody that's watching out there, just type if we're glitching out. We'll hopefully get it fixed. One of our million producers in the room will will handle that for us. You told me. You told me. It was, I know, but you told me that it was. Okay, Carol. I, all right. Okay. Carol, Carol, it's okay. You have job security. Don't worry. You, you won't get fired. Yeah, um, we'll see. Let's, let's hope you don't glitch out too much. Uh, before we get going, everybody, welcome. We want to say some, we have some Papa Pank thanks we want to give out there. Theater Horizon, thank you so much for sponsoring us. Nell Bong Jensen, Brian Butler with Brian Butler Media Relations, James Imes, all of our past guests, which are in the hundreds now. Casual Lee Owens and Cuticle Press Ons. Let's see those nails, Jaylene. Here we oh. go. <gasps> the flowers, the flowers. Uh, uh, is... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. There she is. Black woman owned business. And you know, we about amplifying those melanated voices and businesses. So check her out if you want some press ons. And she's a local Philadelphia uh, theater artist as well. Uh, you are doubly supporting the arts and um, uh, a business person here. Get those nails. That's Casually Owens with Cuticle Press Ons. Um, we also want to thank all of our followers out there, our Pank Papas who have been watching us from the beginning, uh, and our all of you first responders out there. It is still a pandemic. We also want to thank those out there fighting for racial equality in whatever ways you can, you people protesting, having difficult conversations, amplifying melanated voices, people who are educating yourselves, all of you people who are donating your time and money, this is good and important work. We also want to welcome all of our new viewers. Um, Jaylene and I are both Philadelphia-based theater artists, actors, writers, teachers, and friends. Um, but tonight, I am so excited. Are you excited? I am excited. <laughs> this is our Uplift episode, it's our very first one. You know, our podcast is very much about finding joy during these difficult times, but it's also about amplifying melanated voices and using our platform to bring black indigenous artists of color forward to showcase the importance of arts and culture in our communities. Yes, so we have... <laughs> So we have four different theater companies represented today. Um, we'll be hearing from Erlina Ortiz and Asati Ruma from Power Street Theater Company. We have Lanish Miller-White from Theater in the X. We have Kat Ramirez and Arthur Robinson from Philadelphia Asian Performing Artists. And we have Tanakil Marquez from Teatro del Sol. Marcus. <laughs> you did it. You did it. Um, <laughs> but also, speaking of guests, shout out to our guest last week. We had Miss Tiani King, choreographer, creative director, and YouTube sensation. And she also brought in a special guest, her daughter, Heaven King. And Justin and I 
learned to dance from her daughter, the the renegade, you know, we 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 was we was here with it. Yes, we was we was here with it and we did this and we did some of this and we did some of this and we were looking like old people. If you missed that episode, you can go to our YouTube channel. While you're there, please subscribe. Please subscribe to our YouTube. Oh, you were glitching out. Am I still glitching? Okay, it's because when you are earlier, it's just like a robot right now. Jen told me oh, I could, I could can do it her this okay. time. But that was before. I don't know if it's still doing it now. She's not glitching for me. Somebody else said she's all right. not. All right, all right. So we'll just trust in the internet, God. All right, Justin. I hope you don't start glitching. You can but anyway, go to our YouTube page if you missed last week's episode. You can catch up on all our episodes there. After re-watching that episode of us dancing and looking like old people, I was like, I need a drink because that was very sobering, even though that sounds like an oxymoron. Speaking of drinks, I think it's about that time. Oop, there it is. Oop, there it is. <laughs> Get your glass so we can clank. It's time for that. Papa drank. Papa drank. Papa drank. Papa drank. Papa drank. And, and cheers. cheers. And, and cheers. cheers. What you got today, Justin? What? What you got? Girl, I don't know if we could do this. I, I I'm glitching out. I can't hear you at all, but uh -oh. it's, it's almost like verses. Justin, do you want to go out and come back in? Let me try that. Bye. Okay, bye. So in the meantime, it is just you and I out there. Hello, folks. It's just me, Jaylene. I'll tell you what I'm having for my papa drink. Um, I am having grapefruit soda mixed with a little blood orange soda, okay, with some tequila de Leon. This is um, Diddy's. Diddy's brand of tequila is very good. Um, so I almost have a Paloma. I'm missing the lime juice, but this is good just as it is. Um, and I know that Justin, oh, there he is. Justin is okay. drinking what? I am drinking Prosecco. These are just some bubbles because I want to celebrate all of our friends that are about to come on. And yes. pretty fancy. Very Prosecco. Yes. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So wait, um, what do you have uh, that's tickling you pink? Let's go on to Tickle Pink because we got to get rolling for our friends. I know we do. We got to keep it moving. Okay, what's having me Tickle Pink? One thing that has me Tickle Pink, <laughs> I did my hair, okay? <laughs> because I was getting I was getting very annoyed with having to do my hair every week. Um, if you have natural hair, um, you, you, you may know about that struggle, um, twisting and doing my Bantu knots and all of that. I said, no, I don't have time. And my hairstylist is in New York City and the salons are still on lockdown there. So I said, you know what? When the beauty supply store opened here, I said, let me go grab some hair. Got some hair, put some hair in, and here we are with tw twists. So I'm very tickle pink that I don't have to worry about this for a little bit. And also, Chloe and Hallie's album, um, that has me tickled pink. Do you know them, Chloe no. and Hallie? The sisters, they're on uh, Beyonce's label. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they have, they have a, a new album out, and they have that song that's like, do, 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 do. It, it just brings me joy. So oh, that, that has me tickled pink. What about you, Justin? What has you tickled pink? I went to the beach and that has been soul healing. But you know what I was really tickled by this week is on Monday, Jaylene and I at the Wilma, we get together and uh, for Hot House Company, we got together this last Monday and we read through uh, or heard the reading of Fat Ham by James Imes. It's latest newest play um and that play is so funny it's so funny and it may still change and the wilma is doing it next year and i promise you it's like i was like laughing and sobbing at the same time it was just that good and speaking of james imes the will and the wilma 
for those of you that don't know, they've been streaming Kill Move Paradise for the past couple weeks. And it's a fundraiser for Black Lives Matter Philly. Now here's what's really amazing about it. Not only is it an amazing play by an amazing playwright with amazing actors at an amazing theater, it is also, um, it has also raised two, 25, over $25,000 for Black Lives Matter Philly. And it's gotten press in the New York Times. It's being streamed all over. So do yourself a favor and go and make a donation. Get that. You can watch it on your own time. It is so good. It is. And this so is the last weekend you can do that, right? Oh. I believe it ends on Sunday. So you have this week. Do it. Do it tonight. Do it tonight. After we go, go on your computers and do it tonight. <laughs> I'm also just really tickled pink, and I know we have to get to our guests, but the Supreme Court ruling for non-discrimination in the workplace against LGBTQ persons, that is making me so happy. It's a tiny step. There will be back steps, but we're getting there. We're getting we're there. Getting there. Uh, little steps, little steps, little steps. And my last thing is your poem. So Jaylene dropped a new poem this week, The Volcano. And uh, you can, you'll find that. You'll find that. But I promise you, it is... Um, all the best parts. It's all the best parts. Thank you. Thank you, Justin. Um, so tell us in the light up our comments, tell us what has you tickle pink, what your papa drank is. Yes. Well, you know, we gotta just jump right to our pop in with Papa Pink. Woo! Okay. So many of you, you know, usually in our show during the pop-in with Papa Pink, we bring in a special guest and we get to know them a bit, play some games, hear about their upcoming work. Um, you've seen us with Dabi Diggs, Anthony Martinez Briggs, Tiani King, James Ein, da 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 But tonight, we're doing it a little bit differently, just a little. Yeah. Now, we know a lot of our viewers out there are either Theater Horizon supporters, so hi, Theater Horizon, or your personal fans of us, hi, family and friends, or folks completely new to all of that. And because of this, we wanted to take some time to celebrate some of our favorite Philly arts organizations who are out there empowering and uplifting Black, Indigenous, and people of color voices. Yes, yeah, so we are about to bring out some different representatives from four different organizations that we think that you should know about. They'll have the floor for about 10 minutes, tell us about themselves, tell us how we can support them, what they've got coming up, how you can follow them. And if you have any questions for our guests, you know, feel free to drop it in the comments and we will try to get to as many as possible. But we got, you know, we got four companies, so we we gonna, we gonna be moving, we gonna be moving and grooving. All right, let's go. All right, so without further ado, um, our first guests are from Power Street Theater, a collective of fierce multicultural and multidisciplinary artists. And here to tell us more about themselves, please welcome co-founder and resident playwright, Erlina Ortiz, and resident artist, Asaki Karuma. Hi. Hi. Hi, friends. What's up? <laughs> How's Papa it going? I love both of your Papa Panks that you're wearing. Oh, thank you. It says dreamer. Oh. <laughs> yes. I and love my drink too. Yes. What's your papa drink? It's in a mug, so don't judge me. I don't know if I gotta get closer to. If, do I sound okay? Um. Yeah. It's in my Dominican Republic mug, and it is gin and ginger ale, cause yeah. that's the life I'm living right now. <laughs> yes. yes. I thought you had a drink. Mine's so lame. It's water because I didn't make my uh, th uh, three liter um, water requirement of the day. So I'm trying to finish this last half. <laughs> I understand. It's a lot of water. Yeah. I understand. See, water. I, got, I got a little squig left. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so I get it. We lost Justin. I'm very oh, no. sad. Um, I don't know what's happening with his internet today, but we're going to keep on moving. Um, and hopefully, hopefully he can join us very soon. So please tell us, tell our viewers who you are and about your organization. Yeah. Well, hello viewers, whoever you are. <laughs> um, my name is Elena Ortiz. I am resident playwright and course director of Power Street Theater. And so Power Street started. I'm an alumni of Temple. What up, Justin? You're back. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm an alumni of Temple, as is Gabriela Sanchez, who is co-founder of Power Street, as is Asaki Kuruma, who uh, 
graduated as Gabby and I were coming in to Temple. Um, still somehow found her way to us. <laughs> um, and basically, you know, I don't know if y'all are uh, follow the HowlRound uh, uh, blog, but they just posted something today about how uh, liberal arts theater programs are failing their students. And um, mm -hmm. <laughs> the that failure led to us creating Power Street. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, you know, there's some good that came out of it. Um, cause basically we were just like, what is this? You know, like none of these plays speak to us. And then when we started seeing that so much of the problems we were seeing at the university were also magnified at the city level and at the national level. So, um, Gabby came up to me and was like, let's start a theater company and, <laughs> um, or I'm starting this theater company. Do you want to be a part of it? And I was lucky enough to come in on the ground floor and basically just be like, yes, let's do this. And Asaki came in for the first show. She came on our casting call that we did asking, um, have you ever felt like a minority? <laughs> and mm -hmm. basically was like, yes, I have in fact. And she showed up to our casting call. Now we feel a little weird about that word minority, but at the time that was like, that was the word. Um, and so from there we did our first show and in North Philly and realized like, oh my God, there is a whole audience out here that is like, just wants this and needs this. And like, we're the ones that can bring it, right? So let's do it. Um, and I realized that I was a playwright. So that was fun, realizing I could write plays. Um, <laughs> and so I kept writing plays and we kept doing more shows and we kept having talkbacks after our shows um, and realizing how much the community was just so excited about the work, which excited us to continue doing the work. Um, mm -hmm. And, not all the shows have been created just for me writing them either. So Asaki, if you want to, you know, jump in onto some of the devised stuff that we've done. Sure. Uh, hi, my name is Asaki Kuruma. I am a resident artist and slash production manager, but I would like to call myself a executive floater because I just float and go help everyone in a, <laughs> any capacity I can. Uh, so yeah, we've been doing uh, like, Erlina have been writing plays, amazing plays. And uh, also we've been doing a lot of device pieces, like Art of Obits, talking about, what was the theme of the Art of Obits? It was, it was the prompt from the Refocus Festival, which was um, Privilege. So. Ah, right, 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 right. Uh, hidden Disabilities is about health injustice, case of addiction is of course about uh, addiction in Philadelphia, which we were doing the uh, rehearsal when the lockdown happened, so. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was really sad. We were they were like reaching to the like a peak of that creativity and geniusness. And then yeah, we had to shut down, but we're gonna bring it back someday, right, Arlena? Right. That's yeah, what happens so even yeah. if it's the virtual world at some point. But yeah. Um but yeah, so then from there we kind of were like, let's keep uh figuring out ways to connect the community. So we started this Comunidades Conectadas program, which is basically like we meet the community before, during, and after the show. We pay them to come to these conversations and yes. the ticket to come to the show, and it's just like gets to know the community better. And from, from those type of conversations, we are then building programming out of. Um, and we have educational program now, which is called Land and Body, Tierra y Cuerpo. Um, that came from me. Well, we've always been like youth educators. And then I was very much like, I don't know, I think I need a break from young people. Yeah. <laughs> I really like teaching adults. Like, let's see if we can get some money for that. And we did, and we have been getting money for that. So that's really exciting. Um, nice. Those classes are often bilingual. Cool. Um, it sounds like like you're you have a lot that you um, are working on right now, and um, a lot of things that are on the horizon. Everything's kind of a question right now. So, how do you think we can all support you? What do you What do you all need right now? Um, I mean, you know, funds is always going to be the first thing that folks are going to ask for. And with Fire Street, a little goes a long way. We do a little with a lot. So go to, you know, I'm sure you're gonna pop up all of our handles, but go to wherever you can donate. That's the first thing. Yeah, um, our principle is to pay artists for sure. We don't, you know, use any of the artists for free. I mean, there's like internships here and there, but we promise to pay artists as much as possible in our capacity, small, small capacity. But you know, yeah, but also that, because like, like, we need to, we need to get paid. Uh, sorry. 
<laughs> delay. Um, a lot of the money that we get is also for, um, you know, not for general operating. So, you know, mm -hmm. that, and that's a lot of the money that's getting lost right now with the cuts. So that's the other thing you can do too. Right now, the city hasn't fully really decided on what the budget is. So if you can write to your city council and just, you know, we need to help folks understand how important the arts are. So just always keeping that in the front of your mind and knowing that whatever theater companies you're supporting, whether it's us or others, if you're supporting the arts, thumbs up. <laughs> Hello. Are there any- Call them, email them. Sorry. Wait, what did you say? No, I was just saying, call the city hall, call the uh, call and email the city's uh, council members. I just actually got a um, email, you know, like automatic email from a council ma council person Helen Jim yeah. saying like we are pushing. I was like, yeah, go girl. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Are there any events that you would like us to support that you have mm -hmm. coming up, whether virtual or whatnot? Yes, we have actually an event this Saturday, um, which is Nuestra Historias, Our Stories. It's our first, it was supposed to be in North Square Park, a multicultural children's theater festival. Um, and of course we're doing it virtually now to keep everybody safe. And I just got worried that we have like something between 20 and 25 registrations already. So yes. we're gonna be capping soon. Um, and if you don't get into the registrations, you can still sign in live on Facebook um, on Saturday at 12. And it's gonna be for kids, but it's also really, really just gonna be good. So um, for adults, like if you want something wholesome and just like uplifting and that's gonna make you laugh and be silly and make you feel good, um, then check in at, on Power Street's Facebook page at 12 or register at the Eventbrite and get into the Zoom room with us. Nice. Get to the Zoom room. Okay. We're, we're, we're trying to pack it all in. So we're gonna do just one more thing. We're gonna play a quick yeah. game. So we love we love to get tickled pank on this show. And so we love to play games with all of our guests. So all of our guests are gonna do this sort of rapid fire 10 questions, but every single group is gonna have a different uh, set of questions. So um, we'll go Erlina and then Asaki for each question. And the first thing that comes to your mind, got it? First okay. question, don't even think about it. Favorite snack, Erlina. Uh, Tito's. Asaki. Doritos. Okay, Facebook or Instagram? Earlier. Facebook. Facebook. Instagram. <laughs> Comedies or tragedies? Comedies. Comedies. Where's the farthest you've traveled? Montreal. No, Quebec, Quebec City. Here, I'm from Japan. <laughs> ah, <yes. laughs> uh, first thing you'd buy if you won a million dollars? Oh. Where are we gonna go? Uh, a house. Uh, like a, a cruise trip, like around the world for my parents. Okay, wear your mask. Yes, cats or dogs. Cats. Cats. <laughs> Favorite family tradition. Thorny Park every summer, which we can't do this year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, New Year's Day. Uh, if I can be with my family. Oh, a holiday you least like. Father's Day. Wait, what? What was your question? I'm sorry. You don't like. Oh, oh. I don't know. Okay, Christmas. Some, Christmas. Christmas. Oh, yeah, it makes right. me sad. <laughs> Something. Uh, what makes you giggle? My cat. Yeah, my cat. Yeah. Okay, and last one. <laughs> Name something pink. I'm my vagina. <laughs> Go, Asaki. <laughs> I'm here. What's up? What's the question? Oh. Well, I, so I don't know where I cut, I got cut off. Okay. Name something pink. Sorry? <laughs> Name something pink. Something uh, that's pink. Oh, sh I don't know. My, my shirt? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Arlena. <laughs> We're going to see you some other time. Um, we are so, so happy to have you on the show. Thank you. Thank yes. You, thank, you, thank you so much once again. Feel free to follow at these links here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. 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 Woo! Okay.
Let's keep Jesse it. Jesse lost you for a second, but uh, I know I, I'm going through it over here. It's all right. You back. We got each other's back. Here we go. All right. <clears throat> Our next guest is from Theater in the X a West Philly-based company serving their neighborhood and the African-American community at large with accessible, high-quality theater while amplifying the voices of artists, technicians, and vendors of color. Please welcome to the stage Executive Director Lanish Miller-White as she comes. Let's, let's welcome her. Hi. Welcome, Hi. welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for coming on to Papa Pank. It's so Thank nice to have you, you here. Thank you for having me. I'm just, I'm, I'm catching my laughter from Marlena's answer. I love it. <laughs> I know, right? The love tells all. Mm -hmm. Are you wearing a pink shirt? I am. I got my pink yeah. shirt on. All right. <laughs> Do you have a pop of drink? I, I don't have it with me. I had it before I came up here and mm -hmm. I was just sipping on some, um, some peanut butter whiskey, actually. From uh, Flying Fish? Is that the Flying Fish? No, it's not from Flying Fish. It's called, uh, I'm not gonna remember the name now, but it's a, yeah, it's a peanut butter whiskey. I and you just kind of like, sipping peanut butter, but also whiskey. <laughs> that is, those are the two things where you can just get my heart peanut butter yeah. and whiskey. There you go. Loves a peanut butter. You get that man a Reese's Pieces? Um, get it. You gotta get it. <laughs> my, here's, the, here's the rub is my daughter is allergic to peanuts. So. Oh, no. <laughs> you know, it's the worst. That's tough. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yes, Lanish, please tell us, tell us about Theater in the X and you and what you all do. Yes, so Theater in the X was created in 2013, uh, co-founded by myself, Walter DeShields and Carlo Campbell. Um, and we basically were looking for an opportunity to bring high quality theater, telling black stories to black people without any barriers of location and price. Um, so the mm. main thing we do is every August we do a production in Malcolm X Park outdoors that is open and free um, to the community. Um, yeah. Nice. That's our, main, our main thing. I mean, we also do like we do productions during theater week and we do readings throughout the year, but that's our, our main uh, activity. So it was just the three of you that started it, but has it grown since then? Yeah, so now on the admin team also we have Eric Carter, Richard Bradford, and Nia Colbert. Yes. That's awesome. What So are you going to be able to do your project in August or what else do you have coming up? No. So we're not going to be able to, to do our regular um, like big outdoor Malcolm X Park show. Um, we do have a digital project that drops tomorrow. Oh! In partnership with Iron Age Theater and it's a Juneteenth virtual tour. Um, and so you will see three new videos every day. Look, there it is. Go to the website. You will see uh, three new videos every day under the theme of freedom under threat. Um, and it's basically created to tell stories that kind of tell the truth about like after emancipation, we weren't free and we're still not really free. Um, so yeah, starting tomorrow through Saturday, three new videos every day. Um, they'll be on our website, they'll be on Iron Age's website, they'll be on all our social medias. So definitely check it out. Now, Lanish, will those go away on the 21st or will they still be there for- No, they'll still be there. They'll still be okay. there. And will they expire at a certain time? I don't think so. I don't okay, think so. Cool. they'll be up there with, because Iron Age does a Juneteenth um, event every year, usually an in-person event. Um, so it'll be up with their catalog of Juneteenth recordings. That's so good to know. So all of you out there, if you're watching this later, go to that website that we posted yes. and go and watch those. Those will probably still be up there. Yes. Yes. <laughs> How can we support you all? What does your organization organization need right now? Yes, we need money, of course. Always need money. Um, connections to like follow us on all of our social media pages or on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Join our mailing list. Um, you know, it's a little different now getting the word out because we're used to just being out with flyers and talking to people and seeing people out in the community, and we can't do that now. So connect with us on all the digital platforms. You can keep uh, up with what we're doing. <laughs> yes. Yes. What has you tickled pink? Let me take a pink. Um, so today Twitter released a new audio feature where you can like record audio and post it in your tweets, which I don't know if I'm gonna like it at all yet, except Lemonwell Miranda 
did like a test and he was just like seeing helpless a little bit and it was amazing. <laughs> He's always tickling me pink. Lemmy Mo Miranda is always tickling me pink. Yes. <laughs> all of technology right now is making us all just feel a little more human. And I yeah. I have to know about that. Yeah. So that like my right. day today. I will be checking that out. Okay, yeah. here we go. You ready for the game? Rapid I'm fire ready. game. I'm here ready. <clears throat> Favorite snack. Ah chip. <laughs> <laughs> Do you say barbecue or cookout? Cookout. Open at night or close at night? Open at night. Favorite holiday? Christmas. Night out or night in? Now I'm on a night out. <laughs> I hear that. Cats or dogs? Dogs. Android or Apple? Apple. Favorite game to play? Um, oh, I play so many. Right now, uh, Animal Crossing. <laughs> Oh. Mac and cheese or yams? Mac and cheese. Name something pink. Uh, grapefruit. Yeah. yeah. Well, man, <laughs> thank you so much for coming on. I hope thank everybody out there goes, looks mm -hmm. up Theater and the X. If you don't know them, keep supporting them if you do. And I'm so excited to check out the stuff this weekend and uh, check it out as it stays up online too. Yes, please. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Yes. Okay. Uh -oh. Let's keep it rolling. So the next company is actually one that I was on the ground floor of many years ago. So it is my pleasure to introduce Philadelphia Asian Performing. Wait, wait, wait. You moving too fast. Hold on. My computer had to, had to, um, I had to plug in my computer. Okay. We are, we're both going through it. Yes. Well, say that again, please. So the next company is, is I'm so proud of. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce Philadelphia Asian Performing Artists, who is a collective of Asian and Asian American Pacific Islander theater artists seeking to enhance and strengthen the presence of Asian Americans in Philly theater. Yes. Please give it up for my friend and creative director, Kat Ramirez, and associate producer, Arthur Robinson. Woo! Oh my gosh, Kat, that shirt. This is my party shirt. And this is, this is a party right now. So I figured I would wear my party shirt. I love your party shirt. And I <laughs> must need to see it in real life when the time comes. And Arthur, I'm loving the, is it a cardigan you're wearing? Oh, it's a torn up uh, t-shirt that was kind of recklessly, you know, uh, just torn about because I needed something pink. But I, uh, I thought it'd be kind of nice. I don't know. It Maybe. looks like a beautiful cardigan. Let me just tell you that. <laughs> Are you two drinking a proper drink? Yes, I have a large beer. <laughs> uh, I have problems with alcohol processing it somehow, so I have this milk, and I brought some cookies with me, too. <laughs> yes, Arthur! Uh, I love it. This is like the most on-brand thing, Arthur. I love it so much. Oh, my God, it's so adorable. Shout out to Papa. Can we just talk about how Papa is on Papa Paint? This is so many Papas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is truly the most peas I've ever been a part of for a program, so. <laughs> All right, so tell everybody out there about yourselves and the organization, please. Yeah, ab yeah, absolutely. So Papa is a, um, I think at this point we're now like 90 plus member-based organization. Um, we are blessed to have a really self-explanatory name. What I like to say is if you are Asian or Asian American and you're performing in Philly, you're a part of PAPA, you just like don't know it yet. Um, and what we do is we provide really holistic programming to support Asian and um, Asian American performers in Philly. So that's everything from, we have two residency programs, one that supports like individual projects um, and one that is a playwriting cohort to support specifically Asian and Asian American Philadelphia voices. Um, because we started to see some more theaters doing Asian American work. We haven't seen a lot of Philly premieres though. And we think that's really important. Um, we also do professional productions. They're sometimes devised work, sometimes it's scripted work. Um, our last one was called Philly Asian Histories, which was a um, really amazing devised piece that showcased real um, stories of Asian and Asian American Philadelphians that were then um, created into a living museum at the Asian Arts Initiative in the North China, the Cowell Hill, North Chinatown neighborhood. And then we also have a 
really robust um, amount of like social programming for our members. So once a month, um, we'll do something like go and everybody gets free tickets to see Parasite or uh, we do a lot of potlucks. Um, we've been really blessed to work with Theater and the X and Power Street on hosting some really love and hosting like open mics. We did a Zoom kind of like game night another night. Um, but yeah, so we kind of, we're hoping to like care for the artist socially because it's really rare that like you get to hang out with people who look like you who are doing the things that you're doing um i know papa was the first place that i ever like got into a room and i was like oh my god like people like me who are doing the thing like holy shit justin another like filipino person who's like doing art amazing oh. um yeah so we believe in making sure you're taken care of socially and developmentally and also like professionally oh. yes yes so what do you all have coming up or are you currently working on what's what's going on <laughs> Yeah, so we have a residency program, um, our Papa Mini Residencies, which is done in partnership with Asian Arts Initiative and the Philadelphia Asian American Theater Festival. I want to shout them out. They are the largest Asian American theater festival on the East Coast. It's pretty amazing. Usually we have performances in July, but because of um, everything with COVID-19, we're going to push those to when artists feel most comfortable. Our um, artists this year are Joseph Ahmed, um, Naomi Charlotte Thieves, and Mesopotamia Le Fay, who are all working on some really incredible projects um, spanning like experimental film, dance, and um, circus theater. Um, and so they all really need an audience. Um, so we're gonna wait until um, they can have that experience because it's about their growth and the things that they need, not necessarily us putting a program out. What we're going to be doing instead is this is like my admin nerd side, but um, we're gonna be like really digging into our uh, strategic plan, thinking about our mission. Um, Justin, you were there on the ground floor when we had started. Um, and so much of that need was about like, was about representation based, was about seeing ourselves on the stage. And I do think at this point, um, we, we've started to accomplish that in like big and important ways. Mm -hmm. And so I don't think our, our mission is, we're starting to grow, grow out of it. And yeah. so looking at how um, we as a community can harness our power to make the world a more just place is going to be the core of how we're going to start restructuring. And I'm really, really excited about that. I don't know if anyone else is just like, yeah, yeah. strategic plans, lots of mapping, many emails. Um, but that's mostly what we're going to be doing. Um, yeah. And Arthur, I don't know if you want to mention, we do want to um, mention what's going on with the playwrights program and things like that. But. So last um, last year we started our inaugural playwriting cohort. Um, it was led by Stephanie Johnson Walters. It included myself, Pratima Agrawal, Amy Beely, and uh, Clarice Park. And we had a, a fantastic kind of series back in February that were still running a lot of momentum up where we had staged readings of uh, plays that were all from local Philly playwrights who are of Asian descent. And we're hoping to continue that project. We're finding ways to kind of incorporate things, uh, new folks into the cohorts and uh, while still retaining as many of the older cohort members as we can. And uh, we're starting workshops. We featured Ray Yamanucci on a workshop with us a little while ago. Uh, Stephanie Kunks and Walters and us are working on another workshop to go in progress. And hopefully soon enough, we'll have an application going for another cohort. I love that. Right. Yeah. So how can we all support you right now? What do you all need right now? Yeah, absolutely. So um, we're, you know, it's the arts, the unfortunate ask, we're always looking for money. Um, if you have the means mm -hmm. to donate something to us, that would be amazing. About at least 75 to 80 to 80% 80 of our budget every year goes to directly to supporting artists. Um, yeah, not, not even the like, 25 to like 20% is production costs, if that. Um, so we're really artist centered here. Um, and you'll be putting hands, you'll be putting money into the hands of people. Um, please follow us on social media if you can. Um, and I think also, um, there was another thing, right, member calls. Yes, yes, they're on the banner. Um, if you are watching and you're Asian or Asian American and performing in Philly, and you wanna get involved with us, um, head over to our website, click the membership link and fill out a Google form and you can come hang out with us every month. We're really fun. If my shirt doesn't tell you that, I'm 
I'm very, I'm very fun. I'm not, yeah. not uptight and like admin monster at all. Um, but we're always looking for members. The final thing that I want to shout out um, is if you text, um, if you yes, great, awesome. I wasn't sure if I could remember the number. If you can text defend to nine zero nine seven five, you're going to hear about the series of actions that the Movement for Black Lives is going to be doing um, this Friday, Juneteenth through Sunday. Um, and their asks right now are to defund the police, to use that money to then support black communities, and then also um, call for the resignation of Donald Trump and all of the people who are enabling Trump. Um, and I think to make this a little bit more Philadelphia specific, you can defund the police, put that directly into Philadelphia's black communities, or maybe the PCF, because um, that really should not be cut and you can be supporting the arts and supporting black futures through that. Um, but yeah, I think- Philadelphia those are Cultural Fund, PCF is the Philadelphia Cultural oh. Fund, everybody out there. Yes, thank you so much, Justin. Um, but those are some of the things that we're definitely looking for, but yeah, text that. Um, hey, thank so you so much. We just want to play one quick game with you. Is that okay for the two of you? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So let's go, um, Kat, and then Arthur. Just, just rapid. All right. Favorite snack? Uh, CD dried mangoes. Lemon poppy seed muffins. Okay. Something you geek out about? Um, strategic planning. <laughs> Horror movies. If you could learn a new instrument right now, it would be. Ooh, uh, the harp. Oh, the harp is so good. Uh, violin. Okay. Um, best question to ask you on a first date. Um, your house or mine? What was that? <laughs> your house or mine? Okay, good. <laughs> Which member of the Backstreet Boys would you rather be going out with right now? Oh, I love that question so much. Board games or video games? Uh, board games. Ooh, board games, yeah. Cats or dogs? Dogs. Dogs. Favorite candy? Um, uh, meat. <laughs> Did you say meat? I said meat. <laughs> yeah. uh, Skittles. Okay. One of the best teachers in your education? Um, Shona Tucker. She was my acting professor in college. Yeah. Uh, Eileen Lin. She was my eighth grade uh, Chinese teacher. Sixth grade Chinese. Nope. Frick. She was somewhere, in there, somewhere in there. What is the meaning of life? Um, be a good person. Uplift the people around you. You get a feeling in your stomach when you know you're doing something that's wrong and oppressive. So, like, listen to it. <laughs> Collective liberation from suffering. <laughs> Name something pink. Oh my god, I love that. Name something pink. Um, God, people already said vagina. Um. <laughs> These are my sticky notes. Um, they cover my window for all my to-do lists. Oh, I love cat sticky notes. They're so great. Um, uh, cherry blossoms. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Y'all had some great answers on the fly, for real. They did not get those questions ahead of time, okay? <laughs> that was like a peg phrase style, what they just did. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, both of you, for coming. That's Philadelphia Asian Performing Artists. Thank and, uh, you. We hope everybody comes and, and joins your membership. Oh my God, yes, please, absolutely. You're gonna be getting an email from me soon, Justin. We <laughs> have time. Right. Bye. 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 Yes. We moving and shaking, shaking and grooving, grooving and moving. <laughs> 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 go, go, go. There we go. Okay. Our final guest. All right. It's from, you know, I forgot to check my pronunciation for teatro. Our guest will correct me if that's incorrect. Our final guest is from Teatro del Sol, Philadelphia's premier bilingual theater company whose mission is to preserve the Latinx tradition of telling stories by producing and presenting new contemporary and classical Latinx theater work, theatrical works with Philadelphia's diverse communities. Please welcome to the stage, Associate Producing Artistic Director and Marketing Manager, Tanakil Marquez. Here we go. Yes, 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 Tanakil, 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 Tanakil. Oh, oh, oh. 
on mute. Here you're we on go. Mute. You're on mute. She's dancing. She's on mute. She's dancing. She's on mute. She's on mute. I'm on mute. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show. It's so nice to see you. I didn't give that suspense. I know. No, I know. That's what you do best, I think. Yeah, um, I do. I do. There, there, there you are. Um, yeah, I am. For, for being on here. Are you drinking any Papa drink right now? I am. Oh, what are you drinking? Some sparkling raspberry lime spring water right here. You're living on the edge. It's pink, but it's pink. Yeah, it has some pink tones, purple and pink little raspberries. There you oh, go. Yeah. Well, started on purple and pink because Jaylene and I have a thing about purple and pink. Justin is low okay. color blind, but it's okay. <gasps> what is the background of your show right now? Is it purple or is it pink? That the is pink. No, but like the of the screen. Jaylene, Justin. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> like purplish pink. Sonakil, how, how is this purple? Sonakil, what is It's hot pink. This is hot pink. This is hot pink. This is hot pink. This, this, hot pink. Okay, I, Thank see, you. I, see, here. I can see it here, but from here, purplish pink. We're not going to spend time on how Justin can't tell. Okay. <laughs> oh, please. Hello, hello. I'm sorry, I missed your question. Tell us about the organization. <laughs> of course, and thank you, Jaylene, so much for that wonderful introduction. Teatro del Sol is a bilingual theater company in Philadelphia where we focus and produce work in Spanish and in English. And it's mostly to build a bridge between those two communities, cultures, and languages. Uh, we are here to uplift and raise Latinx voice uh, by produ producing Latinx work by Latinx playwrights, directors, uh, as many Latinx designers as we can get, and actors. Um, and it's to be a vehicle of social change and exchange in Philadelphia. So you are you still company in residence at, at Art and Theater Company, or is that were you even that? Tell me about that. We were we were for a year. We had our residency at the Arden. Thank you so much, Arden. Shout out to Clayton, uh, who is the general manager, production manager. Thank you, production manager. <laughs> no, no, that's Courtney, general manager. No, he's the general manager. I was right the first time. Clayton was amazing. He really made us feel at home. Um, and all the resources that they gave us at the Arden was so helpful. And we were able to produce one show, Good Cuban Girls, and our second show, Oedipus El Rey, which unfortunately was paused on opening night. Friday, March 13th, COVID day. So what are you working on now since that pause? And what do you have coming up? So we are hoping, by hoping we are going to remount Oedipus El Rey by Luis Alfaro. Um, will we do it at the Arden? Maybe, we're not sure. sure. Everyone's season's kind of up in the air and timing of when things are gonna be done. So our set is there, so hopefully we can, so we can just bring that upstairs. Um, but we will be remounting it. We've just worked so hard, and it's it's too good of a story to not tell. Mm. Uh, that will be coming up. Um, Teatro del Sol also has uh, a series called La Fabrica series, which is where we produce new work from new playwrights in Philadelphia. That's what Good Cuban Girls was by Iraisa and Riley. We workshopped her play and then produced it in the fall of 2019. And this time around, we have Santa Espinosa's play, Soli Dreams, and Amanda Diaz's play, uh, The Goddess and Her Cookie, which is a children's show. So we are workshopping those and hoping to produce them for the whatever the 2020 season is left over. <laughs> like, yeah. Doing that 2021, yeah. Nice. So how can we support you? What do you need? Shout out to bilingual theater and and for people to not be afraid of two languages being on stage at once. We take care of our audience just because something's in Spanish. The reason why we produce things in Spanish is for you to understand and for 
as to best communicate in Spanish um, for you to understand. So please don't let language be a barrier. Please be open-minded to what, what uh, voices we're, we're representing, what stories we wanna tell. Spanish is just such a beautiful, amazing, romantic, spicy, gorgeous language. And it has so many stories, beautiful stories in Spanish that we wanna tell in Spanish. So please, any, any work that we are producing, shout outs there. Um, any way to help financially is amazing. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't produce our Oedipus due to COVID. So <laughs> all the money that we spent there stopped and nothing came back in. So anything financial would be great. We're a small theater company. It's Jose Aviles is our producing artistic director. Uh, and Yahaira Paredes, she is also a producing director, uh, amongst other things, an amazing actress. Um, but I forgot to say one more thing that we were doing. Uh, last year or two years ago, Jose worked on a project with Taller Puerto which was called Clamores en el Barrio, which means um, cries from the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And it was this really cool project where he picked four actors to write a story inspired by a mural that they saw in North Philly. And so we're excited to bring that back and hopefully to produce something like that in August, September, something we're thinking socially distant where um, audience can walk around either North Philly or West Philly, look at these murals and there'll be a performance right in front of the murals. I love that. I love yeah. that. I love that. And I love what you said about not being afraid, you know, to, to attend the shows because listen, estoy practicando mi español. So, ahí está, Jeline, ahí está. Ahí está, para practicar, para entender, para disfrutar eso, por favor, venga. Mm -hmm. And I got most of that, okay? <laughs> I got most of that. So, <laughs> We need to come to the shows to understand more. It's a great Spanish lesson. Like Hello. you get there. Hello. Listen. Right. What what has you tickled Pank these days? Yes. Uh, I'm gardening somehow, some way. I never gardened before. I've always killed every basil plant I've ever owned. But <laughs> Ivan. Ivan and Javin. Mm hmm Okay, mm -hmm. are you ready to play our game? Jaylene's got the questions for you. Here we go. Okay, let me make sure we can see your face. Here we go. Favorite snack? Lemon Hot Cheetos. Beach or swimming pool? Beach. Favorite restaurant? Oh, Rosario's. I gotta give it to them. Thanksgiving or Christmas? Christmas. Favorite show? Um, oh no, man. Ah, uh, ha, ha, ha. Yeah. Mad men. Cats or dogs? Dogs. Favorite part of Philly, like Philly neighborhood? Uh, I love the Schuylkill River. I can always go there. Yes. Favorite music genre? Uh, I, I gotta say, I love some classic rock. All right. Maduro <laughs> or Cojones? Wait. Dio la Paris? See, wait, hold on. <laughs> Wait, wait, what'd you say? Say that one more time. Oh, re repeat that, por favor. Okay. Vamos. Maduros o tostones? Ah, tostones. Mm, okay. Name something pink. Eh, Rosa, this background, this border, this. <laughs> Thank you. Hey. I concede. Back I love it. Hey, Tanaki, where is Rosario's for those people that don't know Rosario's? 15th and Warden, it's amazing. It's Mexican owned. They serve pizza, they serve subs, they serve Mexican food, they serve Mexican pizza. Hey, wait, wait, Mexican? Mm -hmm. okay. You said Ro Mexican pizza. Rosario's 15th and Warden. 15th and Warden, it's amazing. Support yep. business. Oh. Well, Tonic Hill, thank you so much. It's so good to see you. Oh, it's good to see you both. Please support. Please support. Gracias. 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 Bye-bye. <laughs>
Oh, Jaylene. We did it. We did it. I am worn out. Six minutes to spare. With, with five, six minutes. Jaylene, I, I need to turn off this fan. I've been going through it tonight because um, because of glitches. But, you know, I realized just talking with all four organizations, how actually how much, how little I knew about them and how much more I want to get involved both seeing their work, supporting their work. I feel like we can, it's really easy to get caught in the hustle as, as mm -hmm. artists and actors. And this like moment has like caused us to just pause and like consider what is the ecosystem of Philly. Yes, and if you peeped, a lot of them actually collaborate with one another. Erlina just talked about how she posted it in the comments. So y'all folks out the comments, scroll back up. She posted the link to the event, right? artists on that project so that's three of the four artists that we brought in are in that one event like i love that yeah. these, these organizations collab with each other and so it's just so much just celebration of people yeah. and our voices and just i love it i love it and i know like a lot of people out there are wondering how can i support the arts now what can i do and yes we need to support a lot of the bigger institutions but some people out there watching might not even know about any of the four of these. And I also love that they span our city. We're talking North Philly, we're talking West Philly, we're talking um, Chinatown. Like these organizations are not just in the bubble of center city or old city. And they are, um, you empower them, you're empowering these voices. And I know that's like what everybody's wanting to do right now. You can get, you can both empower some of, uh, some marginalized voices as well as the arts. And I think, it's really important to put these companies in the in the um, on the forefront as you're thinking Absolutely. about that. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, y'all. All right, y'all. We at the end. We at the end. It's time for our pink freestyles. I wish we could have done pink freestyles with each guest, but that would have took forever. So <laughs> that could be a um, episode. A year from now, when we do this episode again, there you go. Bring them on, and they do freestyles. There we go. So for the meantime, Justin, oh I'm going to give you, what did we talk about? We talked about so many things. I'm, your word is collaboration. All right. I need a partner to help me build this thing. Mm -hmm. I go to the store. <laughs> you got it. Come on. Come on. You got it. Go to the store. And I can't make myself sing. Mm -hmm. I get in a room, a studio, or a, a, a dance hall. I get my friends, and we let out the call. <laughs> I'm loving it there. I am melting. I'm in like pure meltdown from tonight. It was great. That was great. Look, we missed out. We missed out. Erlina. I doubt that. I really don't doubt that. <laughs> We missed All out. Right. Jaylene, you ready for your word? No, you know I'm never ready. Okay. Um, let's, because we just talked about it, neighborhoods. Hold on. See, because my screen is so small, I can't see. I got, why nobody ain't tell me I needed to reapply? And you're thinking, wow, that is a oh, good. Sorry. What is the word? What's my word? Neighborhoods. 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 I love neighborhoods in any scenario. Whether I'm going uptown or visiting to El Barrio. I live in North Philly, but I stay getting silly. We here in Philadelphia know what's up. And you got we it. gonna tear yeah. this mother effer up. And I just rhymed up with up, but that's oh, all right. right. Don't worry about it. We'll have ourselves a good night. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You you got it. You pulled it out. You pulled it out at the last second. <laughs> I am worn out from tonight's episode. I know we had a lot going. Let me let me let me make this big. I can't even see. Oh, there we go. Now I can see. There we go. Because I don't got my notes up. What have the people been saying? Have the people been saying anything out there? People been saying, let me see what the people been saying. Oh, they say uncles to zone. Yes. 
Everyone is amazing. Oh. Woo, Papa. I'm still on Papa was on Papa Pay. I'm on Papa Pay. You know, I just want to... <laughs> that killed me. That right there just slayed me. Um, I am so thankful to all of our guests that were on our show tonight. We want to get, again, thank um, Power Street Theater, Theater yes. in the X, Philadelphia yes. Asian Performing Artists, and Teatro mm -hmm. del Sol. Go support them. I can't say it enough. Mm -hmm. It's just so um, awesome to have you all here. And to close out, I want to give one of my proverbs. So, again, these are the sayings that I always mess up. But this one, I think, is apropos for this historical moment. But I said, it's like pushing a hill up a hill. Yes, only Justin knows what that means. And with that, we give you our theme song. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us, all 5,682 of you. It's been real, you know. We heard from so many wonderful theater companies. Um, I hope you all go and support them, uh, donate, support their virtual uh, events that they have, follow them on social media. We just thank you so much. I have been Jaylee Clark Owens. Who have you been? I have been Justin Jane. You have been Justin Jane. And you know, we're just so thankful that we got to do this, that we got to uplift. Remember this this move right here? We got to uplift Bring these artists. <laughs> Join us next week. We have Miriam Hyman, aka Robin Hood. Okay, listen. If you don't know who that is, you better find out. Okay, Robin has been seen on the Shy. That's the Showtime show. She has been seen writing rhymes for Lupita and Yango, and she is also from. Really went to U Arts. Hello, U Arts. You don't want to miss it. And we are first. I, this is the first time we're saying this publicly. Next week will be our final episode on the Horizon at Home platform. So we thank you so much for joining us. Make sure you tune in. But this is also to just prepare you. Okay to go make sure you go follow us and subscribe because this doesn't mean that Papa Pank is going away. Papa Pank is still going to be here, but we're going to be doing, we'll have to do it on our own uh, platform. So you'll watch us on Papa Pank on our Facebook page and whatnot, Instagram. We'll, we'll figure it out. And this is not because of any bad things or anything. We are so happy, grateful to Theater Horizon, okay? It's just that this is, they're now ending their season, okay? We are so happy that they, were able to support this show during their season in the middle of this pandemic. They gave opportunities to artists like us, and we're so thankful. So next year, next next year, next week will be our last episode here on the Theater Horizon platform. So please make sure you tune in. Tell your mom and them to come on through, okay? Because we, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a good one. It's gonna be. No, 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 no. But we're not, we're not, we're not leaving. We still, we still gonna be here. Pop Pank ain't going away. Okay, we still gonna be here. Um, we'll just be on a different platform. But we, we thank y'all so much. And with that, we give you the outro. Bye. Bye.